When you start thinking about how to prepare your home for sale, most people start making lists of needed repairs or upgrades, which is great. But today we're going to talk about the five most important things you need to do first before we dive into all of that. So let's get started. Most people who are thinking about putting their homes in the market are making a list of needed repairs. Maybe you need to paint or fix those little things that you've been putting off for months. While those things are important, there's some things that you need to do first that you may not have thought of. For your convenience, I'm even including a copy of my new seller's guide. In it, you'll find loads of information of guidance and advice to get you through the entire selling process. You'll find the link below in the description. But here's five things that I feel are important to do before we get into all that. And I tell you why. Number one, get all your paperwork together. Make a notebook or folder that can be kept out for your prospective buyers to see. Start with all your owner's manuals of appliances or anything else that's staying with the house, maybe like lawn equipment or security systems. Categorize all your warranties. For example, you may have installed a new AC system a couple of years ago. While that one year initial warranty may have already expired, in Florida, the balance of that 10 year manufacturer's warranty can transfer to your new buyer. They would love to be able to see that. Or maybe you purchased an extended warranty on a home appliance. All of these can be transferred to your new buyer. And by displaying these things for your buyer to see, shows them how well you've cared for your home. Gather all ongoing service contracts. Do you have a monthly pest service that comes out to spray? Or maybe you have a termite bond on your home. All of these are transferable to your new buyer. Have these records available. Buyers who can see just how proactive you've been in maintaining your home are more apt to make a more favorable offer based on your asking price. And have at least 12 of the most recent utility bills in your notebook. Include electric, water, and gas. And if you have anything like solar panels or any other energy conserving appliance, maybe you have maybe a tankless water heater or you've had extra insulation blown up in your attic, have all these records available for your buyer. And while we're talking about energy conservation, if you live in Lakeland, did you know that Lakeland Electric will come out to do a free energy audit of your home? They even provide rebates for certain newly installed energy efficient appliances all of these can be transferred to your new buyer and they would love to see that. By getting all your paperwork together in a nice neat notebook for your buyer to see is going to go a long way in a buyer's mind. Also, you're going to be eliminating any negative questions they may have in their mind about the overall maintenance of your home, which in turn is going to make you more money. Number two, get estimates in writing. Say your water heater has a few years on it and probably needs to be replaced get a written estimate on the replacement. It may be running fine now, but in a buyer's mind, they will overestimate the expense and their offer will reflect their fears. By all means, if your budget allows, please replace the item. But if not, don't worry. If your buyer makes a much lower offer based on these concerns, you'll be able to show them in writing exactly how much it really does cost. Having these facts beforehand will put you in a much better negotiating position. I use the hot water heater as an example. You know your house better than anyone. Be honest with yourself and get written estimates on the things that you know may need to be replaced soon. And please don't put lipstick on a pig. In other words, please don't try to mask any other deficiencies or flaws with temporary cosmetics. If you know that you have an ongoing issue, be upfront and disclose it to your new buyer. More about that in another video though. Now for a few things that may be a little harder to do for some. Number three, purge your household stuff. We all love our stuff. We collect these things over the years with the best intentions, always thinking that we may need it one day. But unless you're moving into a much larger house that you have room to store all these things that we've amassed over the years, now is the time to purge. The rule of thumb is to remove one third of the total items in your home. If you're unsure exactly what that entails regarding your personal situation, ask your realtor to help you. Maybe you need to have an estate sale 
or maybe you need a contact for those large portable dumpsters, your realtor should be able to help you. Yes, this means sell it, donate it, give it away, whatever you feel most comfortable with. This is probably the most important step before we put that for sale sign up. I know some of you are dreading this step, but you might find it freeing and asking yourself why you didn't do this years ago. Number four, depersonalizing. This one goes hand in hand with number three on our list. Depersonalizing your home is a must. That means all family photos need to be put away gently all vacation photos, and anything else that may tell the story of who currently lives in the home. The reason behind this is simple. You want your buyer to look at your house and not your things. Keeping your personal photos and such out will only makes a buyer feel like they're intruding on your personal space. They need to imagine themselves in the space and what their family will look like in the home. This is a very important step when preparing your house to be put on the market. So please take whatever time necessary to properly store your cherished mementos. And finally, number five, we can't forget about our fur babies. As much as we love our pets and we happily live with their various shortcomings, we cannot expect our prospective buyer to share our sentiments. So have a plan in place to have your pet away during showings. Maybe take Fifi out for a walk during showings. And if that's not possible, at the very least, we need to have them crated away from the main living area. But before then, all traces of pets in the home needs to be removed. That means no pet hair on the floor or furniture. If you have soiled rugs, please replace them. Have your floor tile and grout professionally cleaned. If your pet has created damage, maybe like chewing door frames, replace them. All fur babies love to slobber and lick. And although you won't be able to smell any pet odor in your home, your buyers can and will. So clean and clean again. That. I personally have a 120 pound German Shepherd who rules our house and also thinks he's a five pound Chihuahua. I also think that I'm a better housekeeper than most people I know. That being said, if I was gonna put my house on the market, I'd have to admit, yes, there occasionally is some dog hair on the floor and some dog slobbers on the sliding glass door. It's time to make sure that sometimes those things that we overlook for the love of our pets are given that much needed attention. If you're still unsure, ask your realtor for recommendations on the level of pet cleaning that needs to be done in your home. So if you're thinking about getting your house ready to put on the market, properly prepare by doing these five things. You'll be so glad you did. I'm Lisa Kelly, Lakeland Homes and Lifestyles with Premier Realty. And just as a reminder, you can get my brand new 14 page seller's guide by clicking the link below. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.